Episode 10 is where Tower of God starts to diverge a lot from how the webtoon intended it to be portrayed. In the anime, we only got to see a fraction of Kun's actual genius. There was a whole lot more to his plan than what we were actually shown, including a fairly in-depth look into why he did everything this way in the first place. Not only that, but there was also more backstory behind Bam's reasoning for following Rachel, plus Yu's reveal behind the true nature of the floor of test, all of which we'll go through in this video. So, let's begin. Episode 10, Beyond the Sadness, covering chapter 52 to chapter 59 of the webtoon. Starting with the scene in the cafeteria, the atmosphere was a lot more somber due to the results of the test being blatantly obvious. Only Kunin and Dodesi could be seen sharing each other's company. Well, barely. They really only said a few words with regards to how the test had ended. You see, Endodesi was aware that Kun had planned for his team to lose, but she didn't actually believe that it was something that he'd be able to pull off. That's why Kun was a little bit upset that Endodesi didn't keep up her own end of the promise. Apparently she had made a deal with Kun to prevent Bam from meeting with Rachel. If she had actually kept her end of the deal, then Kun's plan would have been perfect. Unfortunately, that wasn't what happened. Even though Kun had meticulously planned every step, because Bam ended up meeting with Rachel, to him the end result was a complete failure. Now, the anime didn't explain what Kun's overall plan really was. I mean, we know he made his own team fail in order to help his friends on the other team, but there was actually one objective that stood above all else, and that was the one to save Rachel from Ho. So, Kun setting up his own team for failure wasn't just the stepping stones to facilitate Team B's success, but it was also to ensure that Bam had a reason to continue up the tower. As for why he would go so far, well, that's something that we'll get to in a few moments. Right now, everyone else still believed that Kun blamed himself for the loss. I mean, Kun did a really good job selling the act that he regretted making the decisions that he did. So, there was a scene where Shibisu tries to make him feel better. He wanted Kun to feel like it wasn't his fault that their team lost the game. If someone was going to fail the test because of it, there was no reason that he should have to shoulder the blame of having caused it. You see, Shibisu believed that Kun gave his all, and because of that, he felt that nobody had a right to be faulting Kun for trying his best. Sure, it would have been worth it had Endodesi kept Bam away from Rachel, but now Kun wasn't so sure anymore. I mean, Bam had found who he was looking for. The way Kun saw it, Bam no longer had any reason to keep climbing the tower, especially since Rachel likely failed the test. If she wasn't going to climb the tower, then there was definitely no way that Bam would either. This was the only thing that would have guaranteed Bam's climb, and that's exactly what Kun tried to make happen. He went through all that work, failed his own test, and even manipulated a ranker just so that he could save Rachel. As for why he did it, well, that brings us to a scene that explains a bit more about Kun's past, to another flashback involving the girl Maria. If you don't remember, Maria is technically one of Kun's sisters, but because the only thing related to them is their father, it was as if they weren't even related at all. Remember, the Kun family has many different branches, each of which are led by a different wife to the main head, Edwan Kun. But because Kun was a rather talented child, he was able to grow up as part of the main family, a place in which it was very common to see his so-called relatives fight over power every single day. However, there was one person who stood out in this constant conflict as an outlier, Maria. She always treated others with kindness and respect. Unlike everyone else, she truly cared for the people around her. That's why Kun believed that she deserved to become a princess. If anyone within the Kun family was allowed to be happy, Kun felt that it had to be her. Despite it being his duty to his own branch to get his full biological sister into that position, Kun still made it so that Maria was the one to become the princess. It's what he personally wanted to do. The thing is, Ever since that day, something within his heart has been missing. Just like with the hide-and-seek test, everything went according to his plan. So it didn't make sense to feel like there was this overwhelming gap inside of him. Kun just couldn't understand what it was he lost when he sent Maria to become a princess. But he knew that the reason he was climbing the tower was to figure out what that was. Not only that, but he also thought that perhaps by watching Bam and Rachel's peculiar relationship, he just might be able to find what it is he's looking for. He wanted to continue to observe Bam chase after Rachel, all while Rachel looked after Bam. But he never had any intention of letting Bam catch up to her, at least not until he found whatever it was he needed to find. It was a reason deeply rooted within his own selfish desires, just like the situation with Maria. In any case, this was all stuff that Kun was telling to Rack. 
And though he couldn't personally understand what it was he felt he was missing, Rack already knew exactly what it was. He immediately recognized the faults within Kun's supposed perfect planning. You see, knowing that Maria was someone special, Rack wouldn't have sent her away to the king. If being by the king's side was a position that he felt she was truly worthy of having, then Rack would have killed the king with his own hands and made himself the king. That way, the person sitting next to him would have been the person he wanted to be with. Instead of letting her go to someone else, Rack would have fought for this supposedly special person. He was essentially trying to say that what Kun was missing was his balls. Of course, Rack's mindset was one that Kun just couldn't quite understand. But I think the problem was that both sides couldn't fully comprehend what the other was thinking. Though, Rack was certainly giving Kun something worth thinking about. And that was that he should be fighting for the person he wants to be by his side. It may already be too late with Maria, but he can definitely still fight towards staying with Bam. In any case, that's when Bam came in to tell the two that he would continue up the tower. Not for his own personal reasons, but just because he wanted to help Rachel achieve her goal. So, hearing Bam ask for help to climb the tower made Kun finally realize what it was he was missing. He should have asked Maria the exact same thing that Bam was asking of him here. He should have asked to go with her up the tower. An option he didn't even realize existed up until now. Anyway. Given that Kun was going to help Bam help Rachel, that meant they needed to figure out how to get Rachel to participate in the next test, a job that Kun felt was best suited to him. In the meantime though, Bam would have to work towards getting stronger and building a bigger team with people that he could trust. And Rack was designated as the group's leader. After this, there was a scene involving both Serena and Shibisu in which we gain insight into how Serena views Bam's peculiar nature. You see, she understood why it was Ho hated Bam because she too saw just how different Bam really was. He was the type of person who could stay focused on a single goal, one that wasn't related to climbing the tower. And the progress he made was one that no one could seem to keep up with. It eventually got to the point where Serena felt that she couldn't beat him no matter what. This led to feelings of both envy and bitterness, feelings that could only be directed towards Bam. The thing is, Serena likely wasn't the only person feeling that way. Everyone else was watching Bam from a distance, but very few would ever want to interact with him because of how much he stands out. He was just too different from the rest of them. That's why when he tried to recruit people to his team with the purpose of helping Rachel, none would even give him the time of day. The only one who would actually make a conversation with him was Endodice. She wanted to know why Bam was so obsessed with Rachel, to know what it was that made her so special. You see, when Endodice saw Rachel for the first time, she too felt that something was different about her. That's what made her want to be on her team. But after watching Rachel proceed through more and more of the tests, Endodice finally realized that she was nothing more than an ordinary girl. So Bam then told Endodice what he told Rachel here in the anime. He began with a story of how he first met Rachel. Before Bam even knew who anyone was, he lived in a world of complete darkness except for one single light above him. In order to reach that light, Bam decided to build a tower of rubble. But when he finally arrived at the top, he quickly realized that nothing he would do to the light would allow him to leave. It was clear that whoever locked him into this world of darkness wanted him to stay there. So Bam couldn't do anything but cry at the realization that he was completely alone. No amount of physical pain could compare to the emotional distress that came from having to accept that he could be by himself forever. Fortunately, that all changed when one day the ceiling began to move. As the light above him began to grow bigger and bigger, eventually a girl could be seen emerging from it. It was after this very moment that Bam began to experience life as a human being. He finally had a companion who could save him from his lonely world of isolation. That's why Bam decided he would follow Rachel wherever she went. I mean, he pretty much feels like Rachel saved his life. And that was something Bam created a serious bond over. Now. Switching over to Kun's conversation with Lidado, this was where the most revealing parts of the episode were cut out. We were supposed to see exactly how Kun set everything up before the test. His entire plan as it was made from the very beginning. Something that wasn't ever fully explained. It starts in a very similar way to the anime. Hwadiyun met with Kun to plant the seeds of suspicion. There wasn't any proof to back up what she was saying about Ho, but something about the way she said it made it seem as if she wasn't lying. So, just in case Hwadiyun was in fact correct, Kun set up various precautions prior to the test. He bribed one of his classmates into monitoring Ho for any odd behavior. It was the guy that we saw a few chapters back who lived in the room next to Ho's. 
He was the one that told Kun that someone had left some sort of note in Ho's room. Not only that, but he also mentioned that something about Michelle Light had come up as a topic. So this spurred Kun to sneak into Ho's room and find that note. After confirming what it said, Kun immediately went to Rachel to tell her that she was being targeted. Now, Kun consulting Rachel before anyone else may seem like rather odd behavior. But remember, Kun didn't yet have any ill will towards Rachel. In fact, he didn't even suspect her of being up to anything nefarious. So he saw no issue with talking to Rachel about the current situation. He also wanted to know if he should go and tell Bam as well. But Rachel refused to allow Bam to know what was happening since she didn't want him to get hurt anymore. She told Kun that it was better if she was the only one to get hurt. I mean, she was the one trying to go up the tower after all. So she felt her problems should be her responsibility alone. But knowing this was something that Bam would never accept, Kun decided to find a way to help both Rachel and Bam move up the tower without either having to get hurt. It was a task that became exponentially harder when he found out he wasn't on either of their teams. That's why he had to seek out Endodacy for her assistance. Kun was very straight to the point when he confronted her. In exchange for helping her with her own goals, all she had to do was keep Bam away from Rachel. Initially, Endodacy saw no point in getting caught up in other people's business. But once she saw what exactly it was that Kun was trying to do, she decided it may not be so bad to go along with it. After that, the next step for Kun was to convince Lowry to betray his team. This was actually fairly easy because he was already invested in seeing more of Bam's potential. That was the last step that needed to be taken prior to the test. But there was still one final thing that Kun needed to do, and it was arguably the hardest part of the entire plan. While taking his own test, Kun needed to manipulate Quant. But that wasn't as simple as they made it seem in the anime. Kun didn't just tell Quant to watch out for Ho. No, Kun was out here doing some 4D chess maneuvers while everyone else was still playing checkers. You see, he made it seem as if he was teaming up with Ho to take out Rachel. Kun straight up told Quant that in exchange for making his own team lose, then Ho would take out Rachel. He wanted Quant to believe that he'd just guaranteed himself a passing position since the best seated light bearer was about to be taken out in the next test. Remember, because Rachel performed so well in a previous test, she was given best seed points as a light bearer. This all went towards making Quant think that he'd been had. But it was actually reverse psychology into making Quant do everything he could to foil Kun's supposed plan. Because he'd just been so humiliated, Quant vowed to do everything he could to prevent Rachel from being taken out by Ho. To him, that would be his way of getting back at Kun. The thing is, this was exactly how Kun wanted Quant to react. He was basically using Quant's ego against him in order to get a rancor to protect Rachel. It was a plan that ensured both Bam and Rachel would be safe since the two would be protected by the strongest people in the area, a princess and a rancor. All in all, this was actually incredibly ingenious. Much more planning and manipulation was put into this than how the anime made it seem. But despite everything he did to make it happen, there was still one fatal flaw in the overall plan. And that was failing to understand how Baum would choose to react. In any case, it was inevitable that the notes sent to Ho would have to come to light eventually. It needed to be put out there that someone who wasn't a regular was trying to prevent Baum from climbing the tower. Leading us now into the scene involving Ren and Yu. There was a couple additional topics that Ren was reporting on. He referred to Bam as someone who was worthy of receiving the symbol of the Triple I. We're not entirely sure what that meant, but it was something that required Bam to become a ranker first. The other topic that Ren mentioned was a brief report on Yu's suspicious behavior. He wasn't sure what exactly it was that Yu was up to, but he was definitely plotting something with Evankel. What made him such a suspicious person in the first place was when he declined an offer to become a high ranker. This was a prestigious title that would have placed you in the top 1% of all rankers in the tower. Normally, there wouldn't be any reason to refuse such an offer. But it's because he did that Ren started to suspect you at all. Now, even though you didn't seem to show any interest in fighting Ren, he was actually rather excited to go head to head with him. The reason that he didn't engage any further though was because it just wasn't the right time to. But eventually that time would come and with it a tsunami that would shake the very foundations of the tower. This was a line that served as a clue towards Yu's overall plan. You see, after Yu's encounter with Ren, there was another scene with Yu and Lidido where Yu further explains why the floor of test is necessary. We've heard him say before that it was in order to determine which regulars could potentially endanger the tower. 
But the reason they even have to do that in the first place is because of the irregulars that came before them. Before the floor of test became what it was today, the tests used to be run like how they were on all the other floors. A single task that needed to be completed in order to make it to the next stage. But it was after the irregular phantominum appeared that this new, more complex test format was implemented. What the anime didn't tell us was that Phantominum had invaded Jihad's personal castle, killing many of his high rankers in the process. This was the first instance of someone in the tower rivaling the current hierarchy. But then came another irregular who did the same, Urek Menzino. Except he didn't lead a destructive raid on Jihad's palace. Instead, he set up his own powerful group within the tower which has since gained significant influence. So much so that even the ten families have started to fear them. It was through these incidents that the current rulers of the tower realized that their power could be challenged, potentially even overthrown. So that's why the floor of test became what it is today. It's to weed out those who possess mysterious powers or evil intent that could possibly endanger the tower. Sure, they say the floor of test is to see if people are worthy to climb the tower, but really it's all to prevent the tower from falling into chaos. A seawall to prevent a tsunami from shaking the tower. Anyway, everything after this was pretty much the same. The only thing they changed was Kun's little act with Rack. Although Shibisu had called them out on their poor performance in the anime, in the webtoon, Kun actually succeeded in tricking everyone into thinking that helping Bam was the most morally correct option. It's actually very believable that someone from the Ten Families like Kun would abandon Bam for being an irregular. I mean, irregulars pose a significant threat to the very power the Ten Families possess. So him helping someone like Bam could bear significant consequences to his standing within the Kun family. And that's what he tricked everyone into believing. It made it so that no one would want to be on the same side as someone selfish enough to abandon their closest friend. And although Rack's addition to the performance wasn't planned, he knew exactly what Kun was trying to do. So him storming off alone to go help Bam was one of the factors that swayed everyone else's decision. But yeah, that's pretty much episode 10. As you can tell, this is where a lot of the story starts to leave behind significant plot points, especially ones that serve to develop each of the characters and their motivations. Anyway, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to be doing episode 11 or 12, but they will get made eventually. Until then though, feel free to check out the ReZero Cut content that I'm doing weekly. But yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!